Some of the answers you seek may come from understanding hypnosis. Practice in chronic pain management. Anxiety is a major barrier to recovery. I have found hypnosis to be an effective tool to help patients manage their anxiety in a more effective fashion. Hypnosis is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I found hypnosis extremely effective for many of my patients, uh, particularly ones that suffer from neuropathic pain. Uh, they've had good results, minimal side effects, and uh, they've been able to function much better with the use of hypnosis. So what is hypnosis? I'm Dr. Eric Womarth, and over the last years I've asked a number of experts for their answer to this question. Let's look at some of the responses. And to me, hypnosis really means how to communicate better. Uh, with your clients, but also with your friends, family members, and what have you? Well, it's really a multi-dimensional phenomenon, I believe. Uh, I think that most of the theories are not really theories, they're uh, descriptive uh, descriptions uh, rather than, than true theories. Um, I personally believe that there are some socio-cognitive factors involved, uh, such as expectancy and context effects. Uh, I think that they are uh, probably the most prominent for people who are low or medium in hypnotic responsiveness. Um, I, I believe that the further up the hypnotizability continuum you get, uh, the more you find that uh, factors like dissociation and uh, neurophysiological and hereditary factors are part of the equation. Uh, I think that some of the research that's been done on uh, the brainwave activity that's going on with hypnosis a couple of different studies that have shown that there's a, a strong genetic component uh, that's passed on with heredity. Um, I think that uh, they clearly indicate that the brain is hardwired differently in many people who are very highly hypnotizable and that uh, some of the contextual factors, the relationship factors, um, the uh, uh, expectancy effects and some of those things probably are not quite as influential, still uh, play a role, um, but not as influential in high hypnotizable individuals. So I think it's really a, a pie with different size pieces that vary depending on the person and what their responsiveness level is. Uh, so pragmatically, uh, when I think about hypnosis, the way that I describe hypnosis to people is as a process of helping people build a frame of mind. How do we focus someone, get them experientially absorbed, create this more dissociated state where parts of the person are able to function more autonomously? Well, what I tell my patients is that hypnosis um, is a means of using your imagination, your ability to concentrate your attention in a unique way to access some of your inner strengths and to make use use of your mental and physical abilities in a way that you may not typically be able to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Another question that has many answers would be how is hypnosis used? In medicine hypnosis has been used for pain management both for acute pain and for chronic pain both for children and for adults. It's used in childbirth, it's used in the treatment of cancer uh, and a whole host of other medical uh, situations. Uh, it's also used for habit disorders, uh, particularly for weight loss and smoking cessation. Uh, it can be used for forensic purposes. It can also be used uh, therapeutically to treat situations like anxiety, stress, and depression. So if hundreds of doctors and researchers recommend the use of hypnosis, why are so many people afraid to try it? The answer comes from the portrayal of hypnosis in movies, television, and in a number of books. What do you do? He hypnotized you. Uh, and don't you ever let him do it again. Those fellows can make you do anything and say anything you want. Lie, steal, anything. And then they make you kill yourself when they're done with you. Yeah, they do that. But he took my pain away. Well, I'd rather have the pain than have it cured like that. Uh, these media outlets portray hypnosis uh, showing a number of myths that simply aren't true. The first myth is that during hypnosis you'll fall asleep or be unconscious. This, again, simply isn't true. Uh, during hypnosis, you'll be fully aware, awake, 
uh, if anything, probably somewhat hyper alert to your situation, uh, but always in control and able to open your eyes and end the session at any time. The second myth is that a hypnotist can make you do things against your will. Again, because you're fully aware during the session, uh, a hypnotist cannot force you to do something against your will. That being said, it's always wise to be careful of who you choose to use hypnosis with, uh, since anything that's strong enough to be helpful can also be strong enough to be harmful, uh, and there's no doubt that hypnosis can, in fact, be misused by some unscrupulous characters. Another myth holds that you should never allow yourself to go into hypnotic trance because the devil will take over your soul. Uh, again, this is somewhat based on the concept that an empty mind is the playground of the devil. However, because your mind is not empty, you're fully aware, uh, again, this is a myth that frightens away people from using something that might actually be helpful to them. The final myth is that uh, someone has to be somewhat dull or gullible in order to be hypnotized. Uh, actually, the opposite is true. Uh, during hypnosis, you're used to use your imagination and your uh, creativity, and these are actually signs of intelligence, not lack of intelligence. Mm -hmm.